Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. This afternoon we welcome you to a time of messages on the seven utterances of Christ on the cross. This was the day when he suffered for you and for me. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank and praise you this afternoon, Lord, for your grace. Lord, we pray as we look at your word, the words that you spoke from the cross, Lord. The seven sayings of the cross, Lord. Lord, help us to grasp the insight that you have given us, Lord. That you, what you meant and what you wanted to say to the world. Lord, help us to understand it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 33, following, I want to read for you. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God. The chosen one, the soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine, vinegar, and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. Yes, According to commonly accepted timetable in the history of the world, we know that our Lord suffered on an April Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Here he suffered for some six hours and gave up the spirit at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Surely these were the most important time in the history of mankind spent outside the city on a cross. We see that on this day as we read, there were three people who were crucified. And all these three some scholars have given symbolic understanding of these three men. One was, in the center was a man dying for the sins of the world, your sin and my sin. He was the man who died for the sins of the world. He took up the iniquities of the world upon himself. And he is the savior of this world. That is Christ. The second person who died was the one who died from the sin. He was the one who was a sinner, but he repented and cried out unto the Lord and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He repented and he had a life. The second person dying was the repentant he. The third was dying in his sin. The one thief who did not accept Christ, who did not understand, he mocked him and said, if you are the Christ, save yourself and save us. You see, he did not repent. I died in his sin. I want to understand, I want you to understand that there are people of these three categories, at least these two categories, who accept and re repent and accept Christ, and those who are lost in the sin and die in sin. Well, 
I want you to understand that all that Christ did was forgotten on this day. He had done for them. He had healed the blind, made the lame to walk, fed the hungry, raised the dead, and cleansed the leper. This is what Christ had done. And on this day, these people cried out, crucify him, crucify him, and they crucified him. This was the same crowd maybe that on Palm Sunday crowd cried out, Hosanna in the highest. And today, they say, crucify him. I wonder of which category of this crowd are we? Or in which category do you and I fit? Do we still call out and say, Hosanna in the highest? Hosanna to son of David? Well, Jesus said, the first cross utterance, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke chapter 23, verse 24. The Bible scholars interpret this word, forgive, at the face value and they say that he prayed his, it was his prayer a request for God not to add this horrible crime against the people against those who crucified him he was willing to forgive he taught forgive your enemies forgive your, those who do wrong to you and that was brought into practice and practically Christ said that he would like to forgive them. And he forgave the, those who persecuted him, those who put him on the cross. He did not want that God should put this crime to their personal account. He prayed, Father, he did not pray that Father forgive me, but rather he prayed Father, forgive them. He needed no forgiveness, for he had he knew no sin. Well, Jesus was mocked by various people who were watching the crucifixion. Those who were passing by, aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild in three days. Save yourselves. That's what they said. Yet there were those who said, if you were the son of God, come down from the cross. They mocked him. The passerby, the Jewish rulers. What did they say? He saved others. Himself he cannot save. This is true. Let him save himself. If he is the Christ, the chosen one of God. You see that people mocked him at the very first value. The soldiers, what did he say? If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself and save others. The one of the two he said, if you are Messiah, save yourself and save us. This is the reaction of the people at the cross. Well, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. There was one reason why he did die on the cross or the death of the cross was that he might that he might have liberty of his speech. That he could speak his mind out. He also wanted to edify the people and glorify God. He prayed. His prayer had two things. It was a petition. He prayed for the people. He gave petition. Father, forgive them. 
we could not understand you and i cannot understand how could someone who was suffering such a pain and agony could say father forgive them yes he did not pray that father consume them he did not say lord look upon it and require it they are guilty of this sin of killing me no he did not say that is it father forgive them christ still forgives our sins it does not matter what kind of sin you have committed but christ forgives our sin he pleaded he pleaded that they do not know what they do he understood their situation these were the people who were misled by the pharisees sadducees the leaders of those days who were fearing their political positions if they had known they would have not crucified him that's what first corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 says there was a veil upon their, them of his glory and upon their understanding they could not understand the glory of god they could not understand their own understanding their own action because it was veiled they could not see through to else they were kept in ignorance by the rulers we want you to understand that christ long and he says that father forgive them he had pity upon them and that's what it is we need to understand in our modern society as well as millions of adults and children find pleasure in violence and and entertainment filled with violence it was the same on those days people enjoyed violence but today our lord says through his compassion through his groaning of suffering he gave life to humanity jesus says father forgive them praise the lord this is the first utterance on the cross i am blessed thank you for your grace of the lord amen